I just want to talk a little bit uh, about the soft and text updates that we had, and you know, which are really trying to guide our therapy of these kind of pre- and perimenopausal women that are still menstruating after their therapy. You know, and you want to summarize that data? Sure. So I think the soft of the text trials are trying to answer. Um, well, let's break it down with soft and text separately. So soft trial was trying to see if there was an role for adding ovarian suppression to endocrine therapy. So they randomized patients to three arms, either to get tamoxifen alone, tamoxifen with ovarian suppression, or uh, an AI, in this case, eczema stain with ovarian suppression. And the text trial um, looked at, okay, you are giving ovarian suppression, and then which ovarian suppression endocrine partner would you choose? Is there superiority to using tamoxifen or the AI? And what we saw is the updated results uh, that were presented. Uh, and this was eight year follow up, I believe. Median follow up was eight years here. And what uh, the, the primary endpoint in the soft trial was to compare the ovarian suppression arms to tamoxifen alone. And it did show that when it compared to tamoxifen alone, there was a benefit to adding ovarian function suppression, uh, especially in those women who were high risk and required chemotherapy um, anyway. But in patients who did not require chemotherapy, so our low-risk patients where they were not required to get adjuvant chemotherapy to begin with, tamoxifen alone um, remains superior in that follow-up study as well. And the combined text trials, when they looked at um, tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression um, with examestane, they showed that there was a benefit to utilizing examestane uh, plus uh, ovarian suppression compared to tamoxifen, uh, and the benefit was about 4% overall, and in the high-risk node-positive population, it was even larger than that. Okay. So, I mean, the bottom line to this is that if you someone who has high enough risk to get chemo, mm -hmm. they should, and they're still menstruating, mm -hmm. they still should get LHRH suppression. And the bigger question, though, is what partner do we add? And I think what you're saying now is an AI. The other, the other thing that I think was really striking to me about the combined uh, data was that women who were under the age of 35 the had main, this uh, enormous benefit. I mean, I say to right, patients, well, that's a bigger difference, over 15% right. difference, the big difference there, right. in disease-free survival in patients who got uh, AI plus OS versus tamoxifen, right. and an 11.5% benefit in patients who got TAM plus OS. So what that means is that you know you can give patients either option if they can't tolerate the AI, they're miserable. You want to start with TAM, switch well, to that's AI. Well, that's it. Okay. On AI. I mean, that's and, it. Yeah, but you have a huge miserable. benefit, and so I really try and get my younger patients. You know and. Obviously, you know, under 35, probably it's the same for a 35 or 36-year-old if they have good ovarian reserve. So it's, that, that, to me, is the most impressive part of the data. And so is, is there fear, as we said before in the metastatic setting, is there fear that you're not suppressing people enough with LHRH plus an AI to kind of counteract each other? Yeah, I mean, one of my patients who was on soft, who went on OS plus examestane, and the OS was tripterellin, her, uh, yeah, she started up her menses again, you know, six that months happened. into it after finishing the chemo. So then she yeah, was called I, a failure on the trial. But uh, I think that, you know, we, we do have to monitor these patients very carefully. I do, I do monitor them. What, what Kamal uh, said is, is right. There's a 4% difference between examestane over suppression compared to tamoxifen. But that, that tamoxifen was, alone or tamoxifen no, OA? Tamoxifen alone. plus over suppression. Right. Oh. No, with ovarian suppression, but the, the, that was the update in San Antonio. But well, from the, text, from text. yeah, the, the but that was for the breast cancer, breast disease-free survival in a way. If you look at the distant disease-free survival, was only two percent, and in my experience, the combination of an AI plus ovarian suppression is a little bit more toxic than tamoxifen plus ovarian suppression. So that's two percent from a 90 to 92 uh, percent, very small. So you That's, really have to balance the quality. You got to balance right. the quality because a lot of people come off this. I mean, in that trial, how many people came off at like 40 percent or something after two 30, years? 30 something. Yeah. And then the business of 30 20 percent at two years and about 40 percent. You're already years. making women miserable enough with LHRH suppression. These young women so are I, making I, miserable. I, You're making I, more I, miserable with an AI on top of it. I, I saw a patient last week uh, that I'm treating with uh, ovarian suppression. She's 50, treating with ovarian suppression and tamoxifen. And we talked about this, tamoxifen versus AI, and it came down to the quality of life. And uh, we are trying tamoxifen and see how... And the thing is, then when people get used to therapy, sometimes you can get 
two or three years of an AI and at some point, all the studies that we've done shown that getting some AI makes a difference and the early breast cancer trials group showed that too. I'm sure it's gonna end up with the compliance that we've seen yeah. be the same for premenopausal women. So, you know, you don't have to actually keep people on this forever and uh, even for five years with the AI. I think the long-term data are gonna be very, very relevant. I think we have the 15-year follow-up from the time of diagnosis for the ATLAS trial to look at 10 years of tamoxifen versus five and the overall survival benefit that we've seen balancing it out with the risk. We do see a trend in the overall survival uh, based on the data that was presented with the median follow-up of eight years, but we still have to see the no, overall the survival, survival data. Was the same, yeah. And more importantly, the safety data right. um, for long-term ovarian function suppression, well, especially in the women with 30s and 40s. Right. But you did, the overall was a higher incidence of fractures. So right, not surprisingly. Right. So, right. so, so I think if we pick, the other thing that soft and text shows is that clinicians are very good at picking who needs chemo versus not, because the ones that didn't get chemo had excellent on TAM disease alone. free survival on TAM alone, right. and there was no benefit. And now we have genomic assays to even help us more with that. So I mean, you know. But but uh, again, the, the overall survival was the same. Well, that's the point. If the if it's the bottom line is most of what you're pre present preventing, right? Eight is years. Local recurrence or new cancer in the other breast, which count as DFS events, the overall survival will probably be the same. If you're but really preventing distant recurrence, the overall survival will be changed. Yeah. It's, it's an early time. Right, it's too it's early. An early time. I agree. With this kind I think of we need more follow-up. Even Agreed. eight years. And that was the criticism of soft and text. It was presented at a median of three years. Correct. Before right. even two, half two the two events. Right. Two so. Agreed. I think we need 15, okay. 20 years. Good.